It's been about a month and some change since the Pixel 7 Pro came out. I spent the majority of that time using this phone, and today I want to break down why I think this is the first formidable flagship phone attempt from Google. It's a matured smartphone with heavy emphasis on the smart that builds incrementally off last year's 6 Pro. And while refinement upgrades are generally not too exciting, the fact we're finally getting these small updates with Pixels means in my opinion, they've caught up to the iPhones and Galaxies of the world. They've actually brought some compelling competition and actually something very interesting to the table this year. So to pull back the curtain a little bit, when I first shared my coverage of the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro when they were announced at that Google launch event a little while ago, I was disappointed, as you might have been able to tell from the video. But while the lack of huge new features might have temporarily disheartened me, actually buying the phone and using it sounds corny, but it cheered me back up again. This was my first time using Android 13 on an 120Hz screen, and let me say, Material U is really fun to use at this responsiveness and on this big of a screen. I'd used Android 13 on my Pixel 4a extensively and been a fan of the playful new animations and design elements, but on the 7 Pro it's just a new level of fluid, fast, and fun. Underneath the surface level look and feel though, there's Android with its pros and cons. I could try to condense all the differences between Android and iOS here, or just assume what I think is true, which is that people these days generally know which OS is best for them. Now, getting into the hardware that pushes the software experience we were just talking about, we have 12GB of RAM and the Tensor G2. To address the elephant in the room, the Tensor G2 is not the fastest chip out right now. Like I said in my announcement summary video, Apple's A16 Bionic is about 75% faster, and the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 is about 30% faster going off Geekbench scores. But the question is, how much does that really matter these days? If the AI side of the Tensor G2 enables things like Night Sight being twice as fast, or enabling best-in-class voice typing through Google Assistant, all while keeping the phone feeling fast during everyday use, do we still care about raw speed? Unfortunately, I do, obviously to less of an extent than half a decade ago, but I do hope we get raw power plus machine learning capabilities in a later version of Tensor. But for the time being, the Pixel 7 Pro is a fast-feeling and AI smartphone, but not the most powerful. Now let's talk about the new camera bar, because this edge-to-edge -edge visor look has become the Pixel identity, and I expect it to stay that way for at least a few generations going into the future. Now this year it's metal with two cutouts on the 7 Pro model, the lonely round cutout is the telephoto camera, and the pill cutout is where the main and ultra-wide cameras sit together in harmony. Now look, I've said on the record I prefer the more mysterious all-black camera bar from the 6 Pro, that might qualify as a hot take, but I'll reiterate here, this is a good looking phone, and the metal bar does come with the advantage of being built directly into the sides of the phone. The back of the phone beneath the visor is glossy glass with slightly curved edges, and it's ultimately up to you how you feel about the shiny materials used on the back versus matte, or the rounded design language as opposed to squared off sides and edges. Not that you care, but in a perfect world I'd keep the rounded design, but swap the glossy materials for matte. Curving slightly around the edges of the front, there's a 6.7 inch 120Hz OLED screen that gets as bright as 1500 nits. It also gets to as high resolution as Quad HD+, but that's disabled by default in favor of 1080p+, so I definitely switched that within the first few days of use. It's an amazing screen though, as the raw specs demonstrate, and really enjoyable to use for scrolling social media, watching videos, or pixel peeping the photos you get out of the new camera system. So on the Pixel 7 Pro, there's a new 5x telephoto camera that's 48 megapixels, a wider but still roughly 0.5x ultrawide lens that's 12 megapixels, and a main 50 megapixel main camera carried over from the previous generation. There's also a 10.8 megapixel front camera that doesn't have autofocus. I really like this set of lenses, with a special appreciation for that 5x zoom on the telephoto. I feel like it's the perfect level of magnification to where it's not too much to feel gimmicky, but also enough to actually feel like it's worth including on the back of the phone. Also, the 7 Pro pulls more data than ever for photos at in-between zooms, so for example, a photo at 3x would grab data from both the 5x telephoto and 1x main. But let me not get too far into the weeds with the specifics of this camera system, and just flat out say, I think this is the best camera system on any flagship phone for taking quick snaps. The specs with the lenses are top notch, the post-processing is great, and night sight. Night Sight has always been really impressive at delivering bright and contrasty night shots. I will say more impressive with worse camera hardware like on my 4A, but of course it stuns here with a top-notch camera system and machine learning through Tensor G2. For more serious photography, unfortunately the Pixel's 12.5 megapixel RAWs can't keep up with less compressed RAWs like the 48 megapixel Pro RAW files on the iPhone 14 Pro. 
Similarly, the Pixel 7 Pro definitely doesn't have the best video out of any mainstream flagship. Across all resolutions and frame rates, it looks good, but small things like unpredictable exposure adjustments, significant noise in low light, and autofocus that's a half step behind the iPhone prevent this from being the king of smartphone video. I'm gonna insert a brief section here talking about the smarts of the Pixel 7 Pro, really what Google's doing with that Tensor G2 and machine learning to bring Pixel exclusive features. I'm gonna list a few in order of how much I use them, but keep in mind overall that's not a ton, and really assistant voice typing is the only feature I use regularly. Let's give it credit again though for the best speed and accuracy of any phone's voice typing feature. But following that, there's call screen, direct my call, voice message transcription, magic eraser, and photo unblur. These are more of those pixel only features. I know I didn't flesh out exactly what all these do, but I don't think any one of these is big enough to sway a purchase decision, so I'll drop a breakdown of all these features in the description below. Now let's get into getting into the phone, i.e. what this phone offers in the fingerprint and face unlock categories. On the fingerprint side of things, there's an underscreen optical scanner that's faster than last year's, but also not on the level of the ultrasonic sensors on something like the Galaxy S22s. And for the face side of things, there's a new face unlock that utilizes the front camera and the front camera only. If you use only the fingerprint scanner, which is what I did for the vast majority of my time with the phone, you'll get in fast, but should also expect some failed reads ever so often. And if you add face unlock, you can get in even faster because generally you won't have to deal with failed reads. I'm gonna say something I probably shouldn't as a tech reviewer, I got in faster to that $140 budget phone I reviewed last summer because of having that side-mounted fingerprint reader I could unlock on its way up to my face. Most modern flagship phone unlock techniques require actually having the phone up to your face already, and that just makes things more inefficient if we're being objective. But for the Pixel 7 Pro, in this category of flagship phone unlocking, it's just about average. What's not average about the Pixel 7 Pro though is its battery life. It's got a 5,000 mAh cell with 23 watt fast charging, and look, I'll be the first to admit my phone usage is erratic, so I'm not the best at evaluating battery life between different devices, but what I will say is this phone definitely has the capacity to keep up with most people's daily routines. I've definitely been able to drain it faster than that between using it in the sun to test that max brightness, taking a bunch of example photos, and using it as a remote monitor for filming, but obviously that's nobody's day-to-day -day routine, and when it comes to capacity and optimization, this phone will be able to hold up for most people. Also, speaking of using it to film, during filming late one night, I did crack the screen on this phone by dropping it a good several feet onto concrete. This resulted in having to get it fixed as the glass was cracked in the corners, the upper half of the screen was unresponsive to touch, and there was what the phone repair technician told me was a puddle of dead pixels spreading from the top right corner of the screen. I don't say this to make you feel sad seeing shiny new tech destroyed or to detract from your confidence in my ability to handle new tech, but really just to inform you that the Gorilla Glass Victus on the front and back of this phone will break. But it will break from drops I think all uncased phones would, and I think nothing about this particular incident is cause for concern. Let's start wrapping things up by talking about everyone's favorite part of buying a phone, actually paying for it. The 128GB Pixel 7 Pro will cost you $900, and a grand exactly for the 256GB version. Now, I will say for me, taking the path of least resistance to get this phone about a week after it came out did result in getting $200 back in the form of a Target gift card. I know Best Buy did a similar deal around the time this phone came out, but I don't say this to expect y'all to take advantage of something that happened several weeks in the past, but really just so we understand that going back as far as right after this phone came out, there were options to make this purchase more cost effective. So that's the story of the Pixel 7 Pro, my favorite phone I've used in a while and the first flagship from Google without significant drawbacks. It took the best of the 6 Pro, improved when needed to be improved, and thus brought us a solid, formidable option for a smart smartphone in 2022. Thanks for watching, lend me a subscribe if you feel like doing so, and I'll see you in the next video.